Often, royal marriages were the consequence of political relationships to firm up an alliance between nations or propose a truce. A royal wedding was rarely made based on the couple's feelings. Sometimes the bride and groom only knew each other on the day of the marriage, and in many cases, they managed to nurture over the years mutual respect, passion, and love until death. However, some real marriages did not work out. Hatred between the parties was felt from the very beginning and continued to grow. Knowing that, this list has five royal marriages that ended poorly. The marriage of George IV, Queen Victoria's uncle, to his wife Caroline of Brunswick was miserable from the start. In 1795, George needed to pay off debts worth thousands of dollars. His father, King George III, did not give him any money, and loan sharks began to pressure him more. A decision was made. George IV would marry his cousin Caroline. It was irrelevant what the two thought of each other. They would have to marry for George to receive the dowry money. From the first moment George and Caroline saw each other, hatred was latent. In fact, George declared, I am not well. Bring me a glass of brandy. And that was just the beginning of one of the worst royal marriages in history. George and Caroline couldn't stand each other until the day she died, and neither was ashamed to admit this malaise. In fact, during the wedding ceremony, the two were honest and stated that they did not want to marry. George was drunk when the ceremony began. He was so drunk that he had to be held back during the event, and he even cried during the vows. The Prince Regent, who would become George IV, had an affable and average intelligence. At age 50, he was finished. He suffered from gout and took large doses of opium to ease the pain in his legs. His relationship with his wife, Princess Carolyn, was nasty and brutal. When he became king, he even banned his wife from attending his coronation ceremony in 1821. The door was slammed in her face when she arrived at Westminster Abbey, embellished from head to toe. Three weeks later, she died. The cause is unknown, but there were rumors that the king poisoned her. Marguerite of Valois, raised as a Catholic, was a princess of France, the daughter of Catherine de' Medici and Henry II. She married the Protestant king, Henry of Navarra, on August 18, 1572. This happened during the darkest days of the Reformation, during the religious wars. Many people on both sides were strongly against the marriage. In fact, the event literally divided Paris. But many Catholics did not see the wedding as something entirely negative because thousands of Protestants would be present on the wedding day. This was an opportunity. The union of the two was not promising. Aside from religious differences, Henry was not handsome or neat. His origins were rustic and ascetic. Meanwhile, Margaret had been raised in luxury and sophistication, and her perfumes, adornments, and cosmetics displeased Henry. Queen Catherine de' Medici also used the wedding to eliminate some Protestants. Days after the wedding, many Catholics were sent to confront the Protestants who were still in the area due to the public ceremony. By the end of this operation, about 3,000 had been murdered. It is one of the worst massacres in French history, known as the St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre. After the tragic event, the couple rarely saw each other. Henry became a prisoner and Marguerite was nothing more than a political pawn. Henry freed himself and went to Navarra, the couple never lived together. The arguments and betrayals were constant. The years passed, and without any heirs, Henry of Navarra realized that the time for separation had come. Their marriage was annulled in 1599, when Henry of Navarra was already king of France. Nevertheless, Marguerite managed the situation brilliantly. In exchange for the divorce, she received her former possessions and the right to retain the title of queen. Louis XIII of France and the Spanish Infanta Anne of Austria had an unhappy marriage, filled with accusations and distrust. The marriage took place on November the 21st, 1615, when both were only 15 years old. This marriage was engineered by Maria de' Medici, Queen Mother of France and Regent of Louis XIII. Louis did not seem prepared to take on such a responsibility. The monarch was frail, beardless, overly shy, and pubescent. On the night of the wedding, he was pushed into the marriage bed by his mother. Intimate encounters were scarce and controlled by Maria de' Medici. 
Besides the youth of both king and queen, Maria de' Medici did everything to derail their marital affairs. Maria feared losing the power she had over her son, and she planned everything so that the couple would live apart. She also tried to undermine her daughter-in-law's image in her son's eyes. Louis also felt hatred for his wife because she was Spanish. At the time, France had gone through decades of war against Spain, and the marriage of the two was an attempt to establish peace between the two nations. With no heir after several years, the couple rarely saw each other. And, when they met, hatred was the dominant feeling. To make matters worse, Anne was caught in a plot with the Duke of Buckingham, who was in love with the Queen. He tried to grab her in the bedroom, something that inspired the book The Three Musketeers by André Dumas. In 1635, France went to war with Spain, a conflict desired by the king's advisor, Cardinal Richelieu. He also detested Anne of Austria. She, who had a good relationship with his family, served as a spy. But Richelieu also had spies who managed to intercept the queen's letters. In 1637, he set a trap. The queen was arrested and interrogated, forced to confess by order of the king. All seemed hopeless for Anne. She was almost 40 years old and had lost her husband's trust and appreciation in a game of intrigue involving spies and war. But in early 1638, the queen realized that she was pregnant. On September the 5th, after an uneventful pregnancy, she gave birth to the boy Louis Dudonnet, future King Louis XIV. When her first son was born, the queen was just days away from her 37th birthday. Two years later, Philip, Duke of Orléans, was born. However, the birth of her children did not lessen the distrust the king felt for her. In fact, the queen's behavior changed profoundly. She became docile, prudent, and distanced herself from any conspiracies, and even became closer to Cardinal Richelieu. Louis XIII died on May 13, 1643. Anne confessed to a chronicler that she never felt sad about the loss of her husband. After all, they had an unhappy youth, victims of the same tyrants, with no right to experience a different life. John VI of Portugal and Carlota Joaquina had one of the most rancorous marriages in history. The marriage was marked by mutual hatred and contempt. The official marriage proposal took place in 1783. Portugal wanted to establish a diplomatic union between the Iberian crowns to ensure mutual protection and trust, at a time when both kingdoms were losing relevance in the European context. It took two years of negotiations before, on May 8, 1785, the marriage contract between the two parties was formalized. This sealed the friendship between Portugal and Spain. However, besides having parental relationships, John was 18 years old and Carlota was a child of 10. Therefore, a papal dispensation was needed to consummate the marriage. Upon arriving at the Portuguese court, the Spanish Infanta learned all the traditional rituals of that foreign monarchy. It is said that on her wedding night, Carlota bit her husband's ear. The consummation did not take place until 1792, when Carlota was already 17 years old. Carlota's harsh temper as an adult clashed with that of her husband, who was considered a buffoon. Carlota plotted against John several times, when he was already king of Portugal and Brazil. She almost succeeded in taking the throne for herself and becoming absolute queen of Portugal. Despite the negative relationship, the couple had nine children. But, at the time, it was said that several were illegitimate, the fruit of Carlota's betrayals. After they returned to Portugal in 1820, Carlota moved to Ramayo Palace. The residence became the focus of absolutist intrigue, the queen was accused of playing a major role in the main reactionary uprisings of the 1820s. The Vila Vrançada of 1823 and the Abrilada of 1824, which attempted to abolish the constitutional monarchy, oust John VI from the government, and place on the throne Miguel, her favorite son. On March 10, 1824, John VI died, and Carlota passed away on January 7, 1830. According to the official version, she reportedly died of uterine disease, probably cancer. But rumor had it that she would have hastened her own end by drinking tea mixed with arsenic. Peter III of Russia and Catherine, later the Great, also had an incompatible and unhappy marriage. The marriage took place on August 21, 1745, arranged by the Russian Tsarina Elizabeth Romanov. 
At the time of the union, he was 17 and she was 16. Catherine was a shrewd and cunning young woman. On the other hand, her husband was quite careless, spending his time in the gardens playing with toy soldiers. The marriage was slow to be consummated and Peter refused to share a bed with his wife. Without her husband in the cold days of Imperial Russia, Catherine was encouraged by Serena Elizabeth to have lovers to bear an heir. Thus was born the future Paul I of Russia. Later, Catherine claimed that Paul was not the fruit of her marriage to Peter and that the two never consummated their marriage, but Paul was physically like Peter. During the 16 years spent as heirs to the throne, Peter and Catherine had many lovers. On December the 25th, 1761, the Empress died, and despite the rejection of the nobles, Peter assumed the throne as Peter III. Peter was repelled by the noblemen for admiring Prussia and King Frederick the Great, declared enemies of the Russian Empire. Peter's reign lasted only six months. He was overthrown in a coup d'etat by his wife, Catherine. With the help of her lover, Gregory Orlov, a member of the Imperial Guard, she arrested the Tsar. On June the 28th, she proclaimed herself Catherine II, sovereign of all Russians. Peter III went to jail and, on July the 17th, 1762, assassinated under mysterious circumstances. The clergy and nobility supported the coup and acclaimed the new empress. She had absolute power and enjoyed one of the most remarkable reigns in Russian imperial history.